Hey gang, here's part three of our video series on how we built our backyard hockey shooting pad. The last video described the planning and design process. In this video, I'll provide a walkthrough of how I built the foundation, the materials and tools used, and lessons learned along the way. Let's get to it. The first phase of the project was to build the foundation of the platform. This phase required excavating the site where the platform would be located. But before you put the shovel in the ground, make sure to plan where you need to dig and how deep. Excavation is time consuming work and you want to minimize it where possible. So start by measuring and marking the four corners of the platform and ensure they're well positioned with surrounding objects. In my case, I needed to make sure the platform was aligned with our garden shed and our fence line. I also measured and marked locations to dig holes for concrete blocks and trenches for the three skids. Once these steps were completed, I proceeded to excavate the site as required. This phase almost took an entire day to complete and was a laborious and, and really a messy job, frankly. Uh, you'd be amazed how much dirt that we excavated just for uh, the shooting pad alone here. So be prepared for that if you have uh, a slope and you've got some a large amount of excavation that you need to do. Once the excavation of the site was completed, the next step was to position the 12 concrete blocks as indicated in the design. To do this, I first needed to dig holes for the concrete blocks, especially for the ones that were at the highest end of the slope, which required the most amount of excavation. I then poured about two inches of three quarter crushed stone in the hole to allow water to drain and provide stable ground for the blocks to rest on. With the crushed stone laid down, I then compacted the stone manually and placed and leveled the concrete blocks down on the crushed stone. All blocks must be leveled to one another. Therefore, I started at the high slope side corner and then installed the blocks one row at a time, constantly leveling each block as I went. This took, uh, for me, what seemed to have been an eternity to complete as I was using a basic level to level the individual blocks and the flattest 2x4 I had sitting on top of each row of concrete blocks with a level on top of the 2x4 to make sure that each row was level to one another. And I have to say, uh, be prepared here. I needed to make countless adjustments to level all of the blocks to one another, which I did by either adding or removing crushed stone from each of the individual uh, concrete block holes where the blocks were sitting on to level things out. And uh, I have to say though, as time consuming as this step was, I knew that if I made mistakes here, it would really result in a crooked pad. So I put in the time that was needed. And then once all the blocks were leveled to one another, I surrounded the cement blocks with loose soil to encase the blocks in soil uh, as seen in the image here, just to make sure that they were stable and not going to move around. Okay, so now that the concrete blocks uh, or the foundation, the core foundation was in place, um, we need to talk about laying down the skids here. But before laying down the skids, we need to talk about weed control. So ideally, the hockey shooting pad would be built on a concrete slab and uh, weeds or rodents wouldn't be a problem. However, concrete wasn't in our budget, nor was the platform intended on being permanent. So we went with a wooden deck uh, foundation design. This means that there would be a hollow space under the subfloor of the platform. And uh, this is a perfect place for weeds to grow and worse for vermin to make a home and really mess things up. Uh, I wanted none of that, so first step was weed control. So before laying down the skids, I laid down overlapping sheets of what's called landscape cloth under the skids to provide a barrier that prevents weeds from growing, yet allows water to penetrate and drain away. This is a really important point. Uh, we have to keep the foundation as dry as possible to avoid rotting the wood. Uh, and I use galvanized nails to tack overlapping sheets of landscape cloth together. And while I was building the pad, it was really windy and the cloth uh, kept moving around. Those nails really helped keep the cloth in position. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but nails worked really well for me. And I had a few spare ones to boot uh, and uh, it just worked very nicely. Okay, so with the landscape cloth installed, I then proceeded to install the skids. First step in installing skids is making sure that the trenches are dug deep enough for the skids to be installed level to the concrete blocks. So to test this, simply lay the skids down on top of the concrete blocks and make sure the skids can be laid level. 
Any areas that are imp impeding with leveling the skids needs to be dug further to correct any leveling issues. Once uh, the, the test skids were level, I proceeded to install them permanently. In my case, one skid was actually made up of two pieces of lumber, one full length 4x4x12 four by four by feet, and a second 4x4x12 four by four by feet was cut to size. The two pieces of lumber were joined in what's called a, a butt-to-butt -butt joint, using a technique that I saw in a YouTube video. Check out part two of the video, which mentions uh, this actual video that I am referring to here. Uh, I had to support the butt-to-butt -butt joint by placing a spare interlock stone I had from a previous project under the joint to support it. I realized uh, this is likely not the best method to join two pieces of lumber together. Uh, however, with the interlock stone supporting the joint, I figured the load would be transferred to the stone versus those screws holding the two pieces of lumber together. Um, once all the three skids were installed and leveled, I joined the skids with cross members on each end of the platform to complete the perimeter of the platform. The final step was to square the platform, which you can do by measuring the diagonal distance of each corner of the platform and adjusting the corners left to right or vice versa until the diagonal measurements of the platform match. One of my concerns with building this platform uh, was the fear of having vermin dig underneath the platform and building a home there, which can be very destructive and require a lot of time and money to resolve. So we solved this problem by installing galvanized wire fence around the perimeter of the platform to prevent animals from digging underneath the platform. The wire fence was cut to size and using pan head screws and washers was fastened to the skids at every nine inches as illustrated in the image on the slide. Uh, one thing to mention here, wire fencing is not cheap, uh, but I suspect the price of an animal control contractor to remove pests from underneath there is going to be much higher. And uh, time will tell this approach works, but so far so good. I could tell you that I have already seen uh, holes being attempted to be dug in the ground and what happens is the animals will go right up to the edge of that platform and they're going to just start digging right down. Well, I've got a really good, uh, I've got almost, you know, two feet of wire fencing around the entire perimeter. And uh, just about on a weekly basis, I find little holes, whether they're squirrels, skunks, rabbits, whatever, that are trying to dig in underneath there. So I can tell you that 100% that animal uh, prevention wire fencing is doing its job. And if I didn't have it, I'd have some critters living under there uh, right away. And uh, this is something that I would highly recommend. I'm sure people overlook this step all the time. Uh, but make that investment and put in this animal fencing if you're planning on doing something like this because they will dig underneath there and you're going to have a problem getting rid of it and in my case so far I've had the platform up for about three months now and um, I have not had a single problem and uh, I'm sure that it's going to stay that way for for years to come. I, I don't think this is going to be an issue for us because we took the proper uh, prevention uh, methods here. All right, let's talk about the materials that were used for this phase of the project here. They're shown here. So 12 concrete blocks, which I purchased from a local stone yard, eight pressure treated four by four by 12 feet skids, um, a roll of landscape fabric, galvanized wire fencing and stainless steel screws and washers and bags of three quarter crushed stone to fill the holes where the blocks sit on. The only additional material I needed was to use three spare interlock stones to support the butt-to-butt -butt joints on each skid. But otherwise, uh, materials for this part of the project were pretty straightforward. This is a list of all the tools that I used for this phase of the project. As you can see, uh, most of these tools are common household tools. I need to mention again that I'm not a carpenter, so the tools that I have are pretty medium to low end, and these did the job perfectly. Uh, lessons learned for this phase of the project are to be patient. Uh, the excavation and the installation of the foundation elements are really critical aspects uh, to this, the success of the project. Like the old adage goes, uh, the stronger the foundation, the stronger the house. And if you really rush this part of the project, uh, you're going to have a, a weak looking uh, pad here. So uh, also, and without sophisticated tools like a laser level, it's going to take a lot of time to complete this phase, but it has to be done accurately or else there are going to be some pretty important consequences later on. Uh, and then lastly, squaring the skids once they're installed is critical to create a straight platform and it took me quite a bit of time to get things square, uh, but a, a very necessary part 
of the of the project here. So just you know, make sure that you set your side, set it, your, yourself aside enough time for this portion of the project and to follow these steps very very carefully in order to make sure that everything is nice and square and level. So that was an overview of the process used to build the foundation of the backyard hockey shooting pad. If you're interested in learning about other phases of the project, please check out the other parts of the video. I hope this was helpful and I wish you all the best with your project.